Oh, yeah. It's a, it's a lot. <laughs> but Monique, she said, can't wait and scoot over a little bit. Just, just slide over just a little bit, just a little bit. I got some things I need to get off my chest, too. She had some things to say, and it seems like your boy, Shannon Sharp, said, I will be that instigator. Come to me. <laughs> Let me <laughs> anything you need to say, I will hear it out. I want the tea. But, um, of course, you know, just to give a little context of stuff we're about to get into, I'll let you hear a couple of things she was talking about. But one thing I do want to say about this interview, outside of her just talking about, you know, the people like Kevin Hart and them, she got into other things, too, that I was kind of interested in as far as, you know, the whole situation with her brother and, the, you know, the assault thing or whatever. So I thought that was an interesting conversation that she had with Shannon, too. So I'll let y'all see a little bit of it. I'll talk Tuesday. Don't worry about it. I'm, I'm telling you right now, it's a miscommunication. That was two years ago. If you talk to him, I talk to him. I've never talked back to Kevin Hart again. The impact that it's had on you and your relationship with men. Oh. And oftentimes when a black woman's been traumatized, she's guarded. Now you take a black woman that's been traumatized and now she got a little bit of money. It... It made me like this and it made me say, I'll get you before you can get me because mm -hmm. I know what it's like to not be in control of what you're taking from me. Right. I know what it's like to be in a position where there's nothing I can do. Right? Everything Cat Williams said here and said, right. we all know it to be the truth. People have a hard time hearing a five foot five giant tell the truth. People have a hard time with a black woman over 200 pounds tell the truth because people that look like us, mm -hmm. we should just be grateful. We got invited to the party. How we feeling about that? She, that was a lot. She spoke, she spoke so many facts on so many levels, especially about the black community. And it's funny because when we was talking about uh, when we was on the OOC, I wasn't even I hadn't even watched this yet, and she was saying the same thing that I was saying. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, as, as far as like calling out the bullshit, or calling out the bullshit that keeps getting perpetuated in the black community, and I was like. Yep. Exactly, because <laughs> we can't take this shit. If we go elevate, we can't take this shit with us. We gotta let that shit go, and the people that want to hold on to it along with them. Bye. <laughs> and once again, she was always calling them her brothers and her sisters. She wasn't calling them out their name. Same thing with Cat Williams, and neither one of these two individuals was stuttering. They were saying things very clearly, complete sentences. They were saying everything, no slurring, <laughs> coherent. <laughs> And he's looking drinking. dead in the eyes, looking him dead in the eyes, like look, look into my eyes, and I'm telling you the truth. It's the age of Aquarius. It's it's the truth. All about and the shout truth. Shout out to Shannon Sharp though, because when she say certain <laughs> things, my man put his head down like, mm. it's like you gotta get it. You know when you're doing the interview, like okay, I see you, Shannon. <laughs> But, uh, interview. It was worth said, it was it was worth the same amount yeah. of time that Cat Williams was worth. It was worth it. What she said about Kevin Hart, before I get to the other thing she was saying, as far as the whole thing with her saying, she reached out to him when a certain individual started, uh, reached out to her about his manager saying pretty much he ain't want nothing to do with her. And this was a white man. And he, she asked him, like, you going to let this white man come in between us or what we got going on? And Kevin said, nah, it's a miscommunication. I'm going to get right back to you. And she said that was two years ago. Of course I believe her. What, what? <laughs> now I believe it. Now, maybe Kevin uh -huh. Hart had his reasons and he ain't had a chance to say his reason is though. So, Oh, absolutely. I believe her 100%. Like I said, um, she's been telling this story for a long time and it's never changed. It's always mm -hmm. been the same. You know what I mean? Everything she has said has always been the same. So, What's going on, I David? Her. I believe her. I like the fact that she clearly and she clearly wants what she wants from these people uh, apology a public apology and oh, conversation no, which i'm like she ain't asking for for much you know she i mean because she just want what y'all took from her she want her public apology and her conversation and i'm like why y'all can't do that and the breakfast club did that too Charlemagne <laughs> apologized jess and dj envy 
as far as when they had on a couple years ago and she was talking about the fact that Netflix and that situation they had and they settled. And she they brought mm-hmm. that up and they apologized. She talked about Tyler Perry too. And that's another thing. When she was talking about these people, she would also mention when they would come through in certain situations. She said Kevin Hart, she needed him to reach out to Tyler Perry and he did that. So it wasn't like she was just bashing, bashing, bashing. She was also giving them credit where credit was due when they would uh, help out in certain situations or whatever. But uh, the trauma thing, and once again, I almost like forgot about that is that as far as that situation with her brother. And when she started talking about that, and even the situation with Oprah, that's kind of got me pissed off with Oprah a little bit more. <laughs> like, damn, why would you do some shit like that? Especially if you're going to talk to an individual and that's crazy and that's your family? Nah. Alleg- allegedly, Tyra Banks did the, <laughs> did the same thing to certain people when she had her talk show. Allegedly. That brought people family members on and shit like that or tried to sh- bruh and, and the like, crazy thing is <laughs> Oprah got her own trauma too so like yeah. what that's why I'm like how do you how, how do you how, mm. that's crazy I, yeah it is <laughs> it's hard for me to say words cause my grandma told me if I ain't got nothing nice to say then don't say nothing at all that's why I be like mm, cause I be biting my tongue cause if I say what I really be thinking Anyway, <laughs> it ain't nice words. But um, how did y'all feel as far as the whole situation with Monique talking about the trauma thing and that situation dealing with uh Oprah trying to I guess bring all her family on there, mom and them, after she had reached out and asked about bringing her brother on, and Monique even said that you can do what you're gonna do, but I don't want nothing to do with it. I was like, damn. Yeah, that was shady. Well, you know, Oprah was, always been kind of shady. Was crazy. Stuff, so. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I remember way back when they, uh, who would you bring a uh, new edition on? And the only person she was asking questions to was Bobby Brown. Mm. Yeah. So she what just was about which? Yeah, about Bobby. And the other ones up there, like, well, why the fuck am I here? You was asking him questions. She just brought him here. Right, but you know, Oprah always been that way. So she did the same thing to Ludacris. Mm-hmm. That's exactly who, that's exactly what I was about to say. I was about to say, yep. She what did you do to Ludacris? Right? Mm-hmm. Oh, she she brought him on and then was like asking him about his lyrics and you remember he lost that pet deal. Like yeah. Um, oh yeah, I remember. And that, then yeah. uh, the Bill O'Reilly and then, you, and then yeah, you remember he was um up what he up for an Oscar for a uh, crash or something like that. So. Yeah. And yeah. It, okay. A mess. Oh, I'm so like, was out bad. of all people, y'all chose Ludacris to go in on. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so she went over to the man's side. She was like, oh, Bill O'Reilly. Okay. Damn, over. Mm, yeah. But, um, you know her buddy. You know her buddy, buddy. Shut up, Bill. <laughs> crazy about this situation with Monique is she going to be joining Kevin Hart on tour now. So that collaboration, man, you talking about about to add on sold out shows. These niggas probably about to extend this tour now. Outside of adding Kevin Hart's wife on here, probably for material and doing whatever she's gonna be doing. But now Monique and Kevin Hart being the headline. Hey. Cat Williams. My or bad, Kevin Cat Hart. Williams. <laughs> yeah, Cat, like, yeah, Cat Williams. That's what I was gonna say. <laughs> My bad, but as far as the Dark Matter tour that uh Cat Williams is on right now, apparently. But yeah, I thought this was a very insightful interview. And like I said, she didn't go as hard as Cat Williams did. Like I said. <laughs> nah, but she, yeah. she went there with she she <laughs> she said what she needed to say and she got it off her chest. So I actually I think, think, think she did go as hard as Cat Williams. She just went on different people. What she said about freaking Tyler Perry and then played the uh, she said game. it nicer, I guess. <laughs> she gets yeah, walking the road. But she gave um, Shannon Sharp the audio, and then the audio actually dropped on Twitter of him saying he oh, lied Tyler about P- Bad Mouth and Earth, right? And then she dropped the video of her trailer being blowing up. So she's dropping the receipt. I ain't know about all of that. that... Yeah, man. That shit was crazy. Like, she was talking about... Uh...